in addition to, to location or central tendency, we're also often interested in measures of variation in sets of numbers. In other words, how spread out they are. And you can look at these three data sets and sort of see what I mean. These numbers are not spread out at all. They're all the same. And as you move down, these set of numbers are spread out much more. So we want to look at some formal definition of that measure of variation or that measure of spread. But before I actually do that, I want to at least make one comment, and that is, although these numbers, these sets of numbers have different amounts of spread or variation, they all have the same mean. If you calculate the mean for all those numbers, they're all equal to 5. And getting back to my measure of variation, one common measure of variation in a sample is called the sample range. The sample range is nothing more than the largest value in the set of numbers minus the smallest value in the set of numbers. For example, going back to data set 1, the sample range is 5 minus 5. The largest and the smallest value in that set is 5, so the sample range is 0, and that simply indicates that there's no spread or variation at all in those numbers. Looking at data set 2, the largest number in the set of numbers is 7, while the smallest is 3, so the sample range for that set is set of numbers is 4. In other words, they're more spread out. And finally, the sample range for the third data set is 10, which is the largest number in the set, minus 0, which is the smallest. So the sample range for the third data set is 10. And that sort of corresponds to your common sense about how spread out those numbers are. So the sample range is a very simple uh, measure of variation in a set of numbers. There is a problem with the sample range, though, in that it doesn't tell you anything about the numbers in between. You're, you're simply looking at the smallest value and the largest value. It doesn't tell you about the clustering of the values in between. So there is another measure of variation that's more commonly used for uh, uh, statistical purposes than the sample range. And that second measure of variation in the sample is called the sample standard deviation, and we're going to use the letter S for sample standard deviation. The sample standard deviation is the square root of something else that we call the sample variance. So we'll, if we put S squared, we're talking about the variance. If we put just S, we're talking about the square root of the sample variance, which we call the sample standard deviation. And the main reason I'm writing it that way is that when you're doing a lot of calculations, uh, putting square roots over this fraction um, is sort of inconvenient. So my preference would be to write my calculation in terms of calculating the sample variance, S squared, which doesn't have a square root on it. And then when I do the calculation and complete the value, uh, my calculation for the value of S squared, then I'll take the square root of the result and get what I'm really looking for. It's simply a matter of convenience. As an example, let's take the data set for um, number three above and calculate the sample standard deviation. The formula for the sample variance, which I'm going to get first, has x bar in it. So I have to recall that I earlier decided that x bar was 5 for all three of those data sets. I highly recommend um, a table for, for calculating the standard deviation. If you're looking at this formula, you're going to need to know the x's, so I'll create an x column. You're also going to need to know uh, x bar, so I'll create a column for that. Then you're going to need to know the deviations of the x's from the mean. So you're going to need an x minus x bar column. And finally, you're going to square those results, those deviations. You need a column for that. And in the end, you're going to sum those uh, squared deviations all up. So I'll leave a box at the bottom of that last column, and that's going to be summing those numbers. So the thing to remember is when I finish, the number in this box will be the numerator of the sample variance. And that's the hard part of the calculation. So I would highly recommend this table form, this tabular form, for calculating the sample standard deviation. So step one, write your x's in the first column. Step two, put y bar. Y bar doesn't change. Y bar is always 5, but I'm going to need to subtract it from every x. So the easiest thing to do is just to write it down all the way down the column, even though it's the same number each time. It doesn't change. It's just a convenience. Step three, the column heading tells you what to do. Take the x and subtract the x bar. So you get 0 minus 5, that's negative 5. And then you continue that subtraction all the way down, putting the differences down the third column. Step four, 
the column heading tells you what to do. You square those deviations. So my, the quantity negative 5 squared is 25. And you continue that calculation all the way down the column. And remember, the last thing you do is take the sum of those column values. So if you add up all the numbers in the fourth column, you get 100 in this case. And that 100 is the sum of the squared deviations. And that is the numerator of the sample variance. So really, the last thing you need to do is write down the formula for sample variance, plug in your numbers. You know the numerator is 100. N is 5, so you have 5 minus 1 in the denominator, and now it becomes an arithmetic problem. 5 minus 1 is 4, 100 divided by 4 is 25. Now keep in mind, we were looking for S, not S squared. We were looking for the sample standard deviation, not the sample variance. So the last step, the final step, is to take the square root. So the sample standard deviation for data set 3 is 5. As simple as that calculation may have seemed for those few numbers, if there are very many numbers in your set of numbers, that calculation can get very involved, especially if the numbers don't come out nice and even. So what I want to show you now is a shortcut formula that makes this calculation much easier than using the, form the definition of the sample variance. This formula is the definition of the sample variance. But the formula that I have in the, in the box here is a shortcut. They're mathematically equivalent, so they'll both give you the same answer every time. The only thing is the one in the box is always faster and easier to do. And that's an advantage, and you'll see that through this next example. So let's do an example using the shortcut formula for the sample variance. In fact, let's use data set 2 these five numbers. Now remember, we've already calculated x bar to be 5. We need x bar in order to calculate um, the sample variance, either using the original formula or the shortcut formula. So we're always going to need x bar no matter what. You can see now why the formula, shortcut formula is much easier, because if you look at the formula, we need x bar so we can square it, but we already know that. Uh, we need n, but that's just 5, we know that, n minus 1. So really the only thing that requires any considerable amount of work is the sum of the x squares. So all we need besides the x column is an, is an x squared column, and then a, a box at the bottom to sum up the x squares, and the sum of the x squares will be the first term in the numerator of the shortcut formula. So you can see how much easier that is. Let's carry it through. Simply square 3 and get 9, square 4 and get 16, take that all the way down the column, and now we're going to sum up those squares. If you add up the, the second column numbers, you get 135, and that's the sum of the squares of the x's, which goes in the first term of the numerator for your shortcut formula for the uh, sample variance. Plugging that in and noting that n is 5 and x bar is 5, that's just a coincidence, and n is also 5 in the denominator, we end up with 10 fourths, which is 2.5. Again, remember, we're looking for s, not s squared, so the last step, step is to take the square root of s squared to get s. The square root of 2.5 is about 1.58. So now, using our shortcut formula, we have found the sample standard deviation to be about 1.58.